uh, Senator Worker, please. Uh, thank you very much. Secretary Austin, did a genocide occur ar around the uh, Gaza region and, uh, and around the, the uh, Gaza-Israeli border on October 7 of last year? What we witnessed on October 7th, uh, uh, Senator, was a horrific terrorist attack by Hamas. Well, was it a genocide? Uh, well, it, it... Well, let, let, me, uh, let me be more specific. Um, when um, when non-combatant Israelis were killed, when their families were burned alive, was that a genocide? Well, I... Again, uh, Israel suffered a, a terrific blow when. Well, okay, uh, so uh, you're not willing to call it a genocide. I, was, was it a war crime? It certainly is is a war crime. Yes. And uh, when uh, when non-combatant Americans were taken prisoner by Hamas, was that a war crime? It all of that. You know, the, the rape, the, the murder, the, the taking of, of hostages, you know, prisoners, all of that uh, was, uh, was, a, was, was a war crime. Was a war crime. Yeah. And, and, um, and that, uh, on October 7th, that was, the war crime was entirely committed um, uh, on, on the part of Hamas that day, was it not? It, it was. And uh, since that time, General, is it true that Hamas has, in, in violation of international law, um, placed civilians uh, in places that uh, they knew would be vulnerable to attack and used civilians as a human shield. We've consistently seen Hamas use civilians as... as, for, as, as During as the time shield. since October 7, in, in Gaza, right? That's right. And that is a continuation of war crimes, is it not? It is. Um, it, Secretary Austin, if, if Hamas laid down their arms today, would the conflict stop in and around Gaza? It would stop, would it not? It, uh, we certainly would hope so, uh, but, uh, you know, that's left to be seen. And I don't want to speculate, but... but uh, that's well, the goal. Who, start, who started the conflict on October Hamas 7th? initiated this, this conflict, Senator. If, if Israel laid down its arms today, would Hamas stop their aggression against Israel? Um, I seriously doubt that. They, they wouldn't, would they? Yeah. All right. I, I think, we, I think um, we, we've made that clear. Let me, let me ask this, uh, Secretary Austin. Uh, with regard to Indo-PACOM, um, Admiral Aquilino has uh, convinced, I think, convinced us that a standing joint task force of uh, a, a separate standing joint task force for operations is needed. Um, are you in support of um, Admiral Paparo going forward as soon as possible with this standing joint task force? Well, let me just say that, you know, it's clear from our strategy and our budget requests, which is linked to our strategy, that the, the PRC remains our pacing challenge. We've, uh, we've done a lot to, uh, in terms of uh, uh, force posture and, and investments in the region to ensure that... Well, uh, sir, I'm, I'm aware of that, but my question is specifically about the Joint Task Force. Yeah, so, Are we so, going to go forward with it with all due speed? Command and control is, is really important to me because it's important to all of us. And so what I've asked uh, uh, my team to do is uh, look at this uh, and, uh, and do an assessment to make sure that we get, you know, we, we get it right and we understand uh, the operational and, and cost uh, issues associated with this. And, and they are doing that, and they'll come back to me shortly on that. So. How, how soon will they come back to you? They'll, uh, in a couple of weeks. And, and how soon do you think we can then move forward with actually implementing this plan? Really depends on what their assessment is, but, uh, but I'll, as soon as we, uh, we have a, a readout, I'll come back and brief you on it. And, and then finally, um, do, you, do you agree with my opening statement that, that the Defense Department and the administration could have asked for more, that under the law they were not 
uh, uh, constrained to ask to ask for the number, much as the defense part of the administration did not feel constrained by the caps. Um, again, we have to comply with with the law, and and well, why did the why did the domestic departments of the Biden administration I, I, not comply with those caps? I, I can't answer that, Senator. But, I, but I, I, will you acknowledge that the, the the administration asked for far more money uh, above the caps um, than was provided in that statute, and they did not ask for more money with regard to defense spending? You acknowledge that? Well. Again, with $850 billion budget, uh, again, we, what we try to do, what we have done, is link our, our budget request to our well, strategy. Well, it, it's okay if you answer the question. I support the president's budget, Senator. Would you acknowledge that the, the president's budget request with regard to domestic spending was far in excess of the fiscal responsibility cap? I, I, I can't speak to the domestic uh, uh, budget. I can only speak for the defense budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Workers. Senator Sheen, please. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Austin, General Brown, and Undersecretary McCord for your service.